Now I'll read today's Bible passage. Today's passage is John 20, verses 19 through 23. Once again, John chapter 20, verses 19 through 23. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together, with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Please allow me to pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for allowing us once again to be able to gather together to worship you today. In our daily lives, Lord, we know that the corona news is quite prevalent and it seems not to go away. But we ask, Lord, that in each and every one of our households, Lord, that your glory be present. In this coming week, Lord, we ask that we'll be able to learn something from today's message and through faith in you, be able to apply it. Please watch over Pastor Osumi as he gives the message this morning. Please also allow our ears to be able to hear you clearly. We have great expectations. Pray in the name of our Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. Good morning, everyone. There was a family that had, a, well, it was a Christian family that had children, and they were trying to pass on their faith to their child, children. There was this father who was talking to this, the child and said, well, you know, the Bible teaches we're supposed to do good things, so every day let's do one good thing every day to make, somebody's ha- make somebody happy. So that little boy said, oh, okay, I did actually something really good today. And he asked, well, what'd you do? And he said, well, I went to my friend I's house, and and I's grandmother, when I told her, I'm about to go home, I's grandmother was so happy and smiled. <laughs> so he was like, I did something good. <laughs> In of course, that probably would have been good if he was causing problems and needed to leave. But what was the main point of it? The main point is doing something good. We can look at the cross, right? And, of course, the cross is something very important. However, Paul said the following. He said, if there wasn't the cross, then we would have a nothing. And... He's referring, actually, not, rather than the cross, but uh, as the, to the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So if Jesus Christ had not re- been resurrected, then we would still be stuck in the same situation as we were, people were 2,000 years ago with no help of salvation. So uh, that's what his point was. However... If that's the only point of Christianity, then it's likely that Christianity would have just disappeared over the years. There's many Christians over the years who who have actually been martyred and given their lives for the faith, but they've passed on the faith in that way of Jesus Christ, and in that way the gospel has been passed on to us today. If 
the situation was that Jesus only died for like the good people, then and there there wouldn't really be anybody martyred for their faith. However, all of the disciples ended up giving their lives or living their lives for their faith. And that proves that it's real. In the Jewish faith, uh, the Sabbath is Saturday. And actually, many Christians choose to have their worship services on Sunday. The reason being is that that is the day that Jesus was resurrected. That's why Christians uh, usually hold worship services on Sunday. And they worship the God on that day. Today's passage is referring to Sunday evening, the day Jesus was resurrected, and what happened at that time. The disciples were fearful of the leaders at that time and thought they would also be um, killed like Jesus was, so they locked the door of the room they were in. If they had were captured, they thought they would be uh, given a death sentence, so they were very terrified. If you're afraid of people, you try to avoid them, right? You know, it's true in our lives as well. You know, if there's somebody you're not really good at talking with, you try to avoid them. And when they start coming your direction, you, like, start looking the other way. <laughs> And for myself, um, I sometimes do that as well. <laughs> it's, it's difficult. About 50 years or so ago, um... I actually refused to attend school. At that time, they didn't have a special word in Japanese for it, so it, I, it was more of like a state of refusal to attend school. And I didn't go to school for a period of like one and a half years or so. In the second term of my second year, if I had continued to not attend school, then I would have actually been sent likely to a medical relief facility in Sendai. And it wasn't for juvenile delinquency, but it would have been, I would have been sent there to like, you know, get my life in order. So I actually spent that period of time, though, in my room at home and didn't want to see anybody. And at night, I would go out. <laughs> and that's just what I did. The disciples were, uh, you know, very uh, stuck in their room in the same situation in a way and locked the door and also locked the door in their hearts as well and were hiding. However, even though the door was locked, Jesus Christ came in. And it seems that in some way, either through wall or door or something, Jesus was able to go into the room. It's very difficult to believe. The disciples were fearful, <laughs> and they thought they were seeing a ghost. Mary had told them that Jesus has been resurrected, but they just couldn't believe it, and they certainly didn't believe that he would show up right then and there. Before Jesus died on the cross, uh, there was a miracle of him walking on the water, but there was a limit. By this, what I mean is that he... wasn't able to be one place and then another place at the same time. Or going through a wall also was not possible. He would have had to open the door. However, you can see how we uh, Jesus had a body similar to our human bodies Uh, when he was first alive, and in that physical way, there were limitations to what he could do. However, after he was resurrected, he actually was kind of in like a, had a 4D bo uh, body in a sense, because he could overcome physical obstacles. And the Bible race, uh, says this is his glorious body or resurrected body, or the heavenly body, different ways of describing it. So uh, a spiritual body is referring to uh, somebody who uh, has been resurrected. In other words, 
uh, Jesus Christ was、uh, resurrected by the period of、uh, uh, by the power of the Holy Spirit, and in the same way, we too can be、uh, resurrected. And this is、uh, referring to an eternal body. Unfortunately, our physical bodies will fall apart over time. You know, our hair comes out, or our wrinkles increase, and we become hunched over. Regardless of how hard we try, we can li- live probably a maximum of 120 years. Old, 20 years, even those who are healthy will, in one day, you know, die. Our physical bodies will、uh, uh, eventually wear out. However, Jesus、uh, had a body at this time that was eternal, and it was not、uh, limited to physical.、Uh, Structures. For that reason, if we have the same spirit in our hearts that Jesus did, we too can have this eternal body in heaven and live eternally. Jesus showed his resurrected body to the、um, the disciples and showed them the mar- nail marks in his hands and feet. He also ate with them. He ate what they were eating. <laughs> Anyone who <laughs> likes to eat will be thrilled to know that they can eat in heaven. When you get to heaven, though, it's likely that perhaps. It- Maybe we won't be eating meat. Maybe you won't get steak. But、um, you'll have a glorious body, and that's what、uh, the disciples were able to see in Jesus after he came back、uh, from being resurrected. And the disciples who saw resurrected Jesus were very happy and pleased. They realized that this was a true fact, and that he was indeed resurrected. And it wasn't just something amazing, but they were able. To,、uh, they unfortunately weren't able to believe in the true God at that time. But when they saw Jesus, they were able to resurrect to Jesus. They were able to believe in Him. Jesus was able to go into not only the physical room they were in, but into their hearts as well, and this is what prompted them to want to spread Jesus at the risk of their lives. Jesus' resurrection was、uh, the basis of their faith, and that's、uh, what it is for ourselves as well. Because if he was not resurrected, then we wouldn't have seen their、um, testimony. And they likely would have given up on their testimony, and given up on following Christianity too. However, that it has been passed on to all different countries in Japan as well, and that's why you're aware of it today. Christianity's basis is based on his resurrect、uh, Jesus' resurrection. When you meet this resurrected Jesus Christ. Uh, or when the di- disciples met him, he said to them, "Peace be with you." This actually was a normal Jewish greeting in the normal、uh, the, that language of that time, shalom. And you would hear the word shalom even today when you go to Israel. And so, it's not something strange that they would say, but it's like in saying hello or konnichiwa in Japan these days. So they w- they would have said shalom. However, the disciples at this time were. Listening to the, what he said in a different way than usual, it really hit their hearts and echoed in their hearts. A few days prior to this instance, the disciples were with Jesus in、uh, before the Garden of Gethsemane, enjoying the Last Supper with him. And he said that my peace I live leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. However, 
their hearts actually didn't receive this message, you know, kind of went out and one, in, one in one ear and out the other. And in their minds, they had a lot of fears and concerns, and they didn't know when Jesus would be re- uh, arrested and what would happen. And they were just had all these fears, so they weren't able to hear the truth of what he was telling them at that time. However, now that he was resurrected and alive, they realized that what he had said had come to pass, and that's what hit their hearts and gave them the peace that they wanted. Jesus' resurrection and pr- was proved through uh, him being there, and it gave them strength and peace. Uh, there's one person who gave the following testimony, saying that when they were a third-year high school student, they came to faith in Christ, and they were baptized. And when they were actually in trouble with their parents uh, because of this, and he be beaten on his back, and his Bible was taken away and th- uh, taken away and thrown away. He was in big trouble with his parents, and he was prohibited to attend church, and just allowed to go to sc- home and school, home and school, and just monitored by his parents really uh, severely. He actually was. Uh, studying English to try to get into university to uh, help spread God's word around the world, and the parents prohibited that as well, and told him to focus on music instead. And when he was a third-year high school student, uh, he had to quick change his direction. His parents told him that he needed to uh, study another um, realm. And so he went to this uh, uh, teacher to go learn about that subject as well, and he just went there all out of hope. But he was uh, he, when he opened the door, he was surprised because he thought it was a church member. <laughs> so the parent, his parents, had found this teacher for him, and it, it ended up being somebody at the church. And that person has passed away now, but at that time it was a local um, a musical uh, 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 spot. And prior to that's where my uh, wife actually learned music. And at that time she was actually worried about passing a test, and and they prayed. And so myself and her and the teacher and other person we all prayed together about this, and. We prayed that she would receive peace so that she would be able to focus. And we read that passage from the Bible, and she really felt this peace in her heart. Uh, and the next day, she was able to take the test and pass, and w- it was able to um, c- further on with her musical talent, which she's still doing today. Peace is something that is given to us by the Holy Spirit. And even though you may have various fears and so on, we know that we can ask for peace by sh- saying shalom. Right now, you can hear rain likely, and even though, in the same way, our lives can all of a sudden have a weather change, and we can all of a sudden be just filled with fear, or filled with something. And at those times, too, you know, God talks to us and says, you know, shalom, have peace. And in those times, you know, we can turn to her God, and really, and in that way, can be filled with peace. So I encourage you to listen for that. Jesus、uh, and God is always speaking to us, telling us to have peace. So Jesus gave the disciples peace, and that wasn't just the f- well, first and only purpose. First, he said.、Um, He first he spoke to them, and then he breathed the spirit on them, saying, "First, peace be with you, as the Father sent me. I'm sending to you." And he gave his life, and and proved that there was a relationship between、uh, the Holy, him, he and the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit and peace. Having the Holy Spirit allows there to be peace in one's heart, and to be filled with it. But that's not the final and only purpose of such a thing. To be filled with peace in and of itself is not the purpose. 
The Lord wants to use us, and, and that's why He gives us the Holy Spirit. It's difficult to believe in the resurrection, so it's also difficult to believe in the Holy Spirit because we can't see Him. In history, we know that、uh, Jesus existed. Anyone at the church, any in school would know that, but you don't learn about the Holy Spirit at school. However, we who know the Bible realize that、uh, Jesus and the Holy Spirit are both、uh, real. On the, we also realize. That their existence is、uh, prev- uh, is everywhere,、uh, regardless of where you're in the world, and so that's why we can receive the Holy Spirit and have peace,、uh, where regardless of where we are. There's one question you might be asking. You know, after a period of 50 days was、uh, Pentecost, and that was a time of celebration. In Christianity, we celebrate Christmas, Easter, and Pente- Pentecost. Those are three of the main festivals. Christmas and Easter are big celebrations, but Pentecost just kind of gets left off to the side. Last week was Senec- last week was Pentecost, but a lot of people may not even realize that. <laughs> However, if the, the Holy Spirit hadn't come, the church wouldn't have started. It's because the Holy Spirit is here. That God has come to live in each of in our hearts. So this day of Pentecost is quite important in that way, because after 50 days, the Holy Spirit it was uh, like uh, prophesied to come. Luke said the following. He says, "They." I'm going to send you what my father has promised, but stay in the city until you have been clothed from power on high. And they were changed by the Holy Spirit because of this. They were filled with joy. It says, then they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy, and they stayed continuing in the temple praising God. They had been like hiding, not wanting to meet anybody, and when they went to Jerusalem. They would have been put like right in front of the people who they feared. They, because there were a lot of Jewish leaders in that area, it would have been actually considered really dangerous. <laughs> But that's actually where they decided to go with and ended up with great joy. They were praising God and worshiping as well. However, they were filled with peace. But there was one thing lacking. And that was being used. They stopped be- there and worshipped God, but didn't leave. However, Pentecost was promised by the Lord as being the day that the Holy Spirit would come and that they would be given power and strength. They would start from Jerusalem and go to Samaria and other places around the world、uh, to share to be witnesses of Him. That was the start, and once again, the start was Pentecost. So, Holy Spirit and being filled with Him is was great of great importance. Jesus breathed on them. It says here in today's passage, and this is also you may remember in Genesis where God breathed on Adam to start to be,、uh, create him. God breathed on the the soil and breathed life into him. And breath actually in、um, Hebrew means like life, and in that way, Adam became alive, and that's how he started living. So, any the Bible says we can't be、uh, live eternally if we are not reborn. So Adam was given、uh, physical and.、Uh, Spiritual life, and we, when we believe in Jesus, can be reborn in the same way. Those of us who accept Jesus Christ are considered a child of God. In addition, God wants to use us and sends the Holy Spirit on us, but told them at that time to wait. There's.、Uh, Pastor in Tokyo who said the following. 
he said the 50, the, they really didn't have to wait 50 days because the Holy Spirit came and the disciples who had Holy Spirit were changed because of that and that the start of it was all Pentecost. So when you believe in the Holy Spirit, actually you don't have to wait these 50 days. Um, you don't have to wait for anything because he's there instantly and you can be used by God instantly. So it, it's not like you have to have some special experience. There's no special conditions for this. It, when you believe in Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit will come into your heart, but you need to be continuously filled by him in order to be used for his purposes. Paul said that this isn't something that just happens once, but rather it's something that's in the form of the word in present in continuing form. So to continue being filled by the Spirit is what he was trying to say. The disciples were persecuted and became quite afraid, and they had to return to God and said, God, please give us more strength and more encouragement, and in this way the Holy Spirit would uh, strengthen them numerous times and keep filling them, enabling them to be used for God's purposes multiple times. And that's how we have received the grace of the um, gospel. So we are to continue being filled with the Spirit. I would like to explain one more point about uh, what happened after Jesus said to be filled with the Spirit. It says, uh, if you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you don't forgive them, they are not forgiven. In Catholic churches, uh, it explains that the disciples, or it explains that the leadership have the uh, ability to forgive sins. And so there's uh, something called penance in the Catholic Church where if you sin, you're supposed to go to the church and you're supposed to, to talk to some leadership and then pray. And the person with the authority to ha forgive you f forgives you. However, this is not the case because God, only God can forgive sins. And we actually have the ability to uh, talk directly to God. We don't need somebody going in between us. And we have to have the, par the power of the Holy Spirit in order to make this uh, realize realization. My message actually is a, actually a test is a, actually a testimony. I'd like to tell of what some specific uh, instance that's happened in my life to close today. Um, there's been people who've been praying for me, but on March 3rd, uh, I met a friend who was baptized at the same time I was uh, 47 years ago, and she actually has passed away now. And we actually lived different lights after that and she wasn't able to go to church for various reasons and married a non-believer. However, she always gave a tithe and always read the Bible and always told her children and grandchildren about the gospel. And she had five grand, uh, grandchildren. All of them have you know, biblical names, and she really desired that they would all go to heaven. However, a few years ago, she... Uh, she f wasn't feeling well, went to the hospital, and it was found out that she actually had stage 4 uh, cancer and only was expected to live a few months. And she was able to leave, uh, live a little longer than was expected. She, uh, I was actually helping at the church she attended, and this uh, pastor contacted me from that church and said that she was trying to get in contact with me. And so we talked after like 40 years at that time. And she said that when she went to heaven, she wanted me to be in charge of a, her memorial service. And I, you know, I really wanted to do that for her. But at first I declined her request, you know. 
I said, actually, ask your pastor instead. I didn't have a problem with her, but I had a problem with her older sister, actually. Her older sister uh, was one who I actually was going out with uh over 40 years before that, but we didn't get along well, and it just wasn't working out, and so we I broke up. And it was probably because I wasn't being nice, and there was other problems as well. But as a result, um, it really hurt her, her older sister, and actually she even tried to take her life because of it. And after that, you know, they... Uh, um, you know, her older sister and her moved to a different location, and they opened a coffee shop there. And we went there to talk, and kind, and we were able to have a decent conversation. And at that time, I, 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 I was uh, uh, given my, my present wife uh, was introduced to her and asked if we would consider married marrying her. And, and, and so that's what happened. And so this was actually six months after all of this uh, problem with this other uh, lady and her older sister. And, I, and, and so, uh, so we, did to, we decided to get married. And it was almost time for the, um, the pre-ceremony. And actually a letter was sent to my now present wife and I still can't <laughs> forget this but there, there was the coffee shop and a lot of people would know about this anyway so my wife and I went to the coffee shop and uh, she showed me this letter she had received and I read it and I was shocked and she was too she was so sad and it was a really difficult situation it's hard to read the letter and the letter basically said, don't get married because if you marry him, there'll be a problem. And this was from the older sister who somehow got a hold of her uh, address. But the, we talked to the pastor and he said, well, no, actually, you should just go ahead and get married as, um, as um, prom- you plan because that you know, would actually help the older sister get over this. And so we did get married. And then about six months after we got married, that the older sister of my, this other lady actually got married herself. Anyway, um, it, it was just something that was just kind of um, uncomfortable, and not only in my heart, but likely in her, the older sister's heart as well. It just feels like yeah, I like had a bone stuck in my throat or something. I always prayed. And in my journals, it, it says... God, I just received this <laughs> bone from my throat sometime before I go to heaven. And, however, God didn't allow me to talk directly to the older sister, but rather to uh, his, her younger sister. So I was, when we were talking again about the funeral, cer- upcoming funeral ceremony, she said, you know, my older sister's my older sister, and just don't worry about her. You know, I want you to do my funeral service when I die. And so we uh, started to communicate over line, and around October 30th, I received a line a message from her, and she had read the Daily Manna passage that I had written that day. And she really realized that Jesus Christ had provided uh, forgiveness. Specifically, uh, uh, she had realized that my uh, testimony in the... Um, Man, daily mana was about referring to her uh, in uh, the situation with her older sister and how forgiveness is important and uh, she was able to talk to her older sister to try to uh, resolve this and just let it go and have forgiveness and so uh, she also wants to go to uh, heaven And in this way, my heart finally felt light. Three months later, maybe two months on uh, March 3rd was the, f- the funeral memorial service. And the older sister, of course, came to attend. And this was my first time to see her for you know a period of over 40 years. And in my heart, I was a little worried. Um, but I had great expectation as well. When I met her, she uh, was quite b- bewildered and wasn't able to speak a bit. But I smiled and uh, said hello and said, yeah, it's been a while. (laughs) 
and didn't say anything other than that. But, you know, my wife and I were uh, happy to see her. And uh, there was another woman there and who said, you know, the Lord has really been guiding you. So today's uh, theme is really simple. Receive the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is the one who is has the eternal glory of God. And he gives us peace. He allows us to be used for God's purposes. And he allows us to do things that we can't do on our own power in order to give forgiveness, to forgive others. Because of this, the Holy Spirit is essential. That's why it's essential for us to be filled with him. Regardless of how good we make an effort at anything, there are things that we just can't do on our own. We need God. So... We ask that God will allow us to be filled with the Holy Spirit and that we will continue to ask for that to be so. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, when we look back on our own lives, we see how many mistakes we've made. It's just a lot of embarrassing moments and a lot of problems, things that we just can't resolve, especially on our own. But we know, Lord, that you are God, and you are you can do things that we can't do. We know that you live in our hearts. We know that every day you promise to fill us with your presence. We're thankful for that, Lord. And we ask that according to your guidance, that we can receive the Holy Spirit, be filled with him, so allow us to ask that on a daily basis. Without your power and strength, Lord, we can't even live. Lord, we pray in your name. Amen. Now we'll have a moment of silence to pray. <laughs> 